Hi everybody, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I hope you're doing well. I have a project that we're going to work on in this video and a few things to go over just to let you know. If you haven't been to the website, there's a few things available. Uh, the one thing that's the newest is the pattern for these uh, third scale ball jointed doll shoes. So they're cute little wingtip shoes. I um, have experimented quite a bit with shoes. The first pair I did were a little bit too big. They were boots and then I made those into high tops and they just were too big around the toe, too long for my dolls. And uh, so I thought, okay, scale it down, scale it down. So finally, I have a pair of shoes that fits the third scale 66 centimeter uh, male dolls and the measurements are on, oh, the, I think they're on the website and on Facebook. So this pattern is posted. It's available for you. It's free on the website on Missy's Imagining. So if you want to try some shoes, you can go ahead and go over there. The other thing I was going to let you know is I had posted on the website and I did a video on making your own bias tape maker and it's these simple little folded pieces of cardstock paper. The pattern is on the website and you can uh, download that and print it out. And the fabric kind of goes through here and then you put the little slider on the end. My hand gets out of the way. And then simply pull the fabric through. It'll fold and uh, you can iron it. There's little pink uh, sections that should show and help that stand up that'll help the fabric feed through a little easier so I did a whole video on that because I was waiting for ones that I had purchased to arrive in the mail which they did and so that little kit looks like this so it actually arrived and I was tickled about that and so I wanted to compare and <laughs> I was very surprised and pleased to say that in some cases I actually liked these better than these. They were a little bulky maybe and this little slider part because it slides on and keeps this end taut on the fabric it holds the fabric in place a little bit better than these. The other thing I found is if the fabric gets kind of wonky and twisted in the maker while you're ironing. If I've already ironed out, you know, a yard and a half of bias tape because I'm making it in continuous rolls. So I've got a yard and a half that I've already ironed and the fabric is twisted off. These are very simple because you can just slide this down and it'll stay on the fabric. You can unfold this, realign your fabric, fold it back up, you know around the fabric and and simply slide it back into the slider and never have to worry about all the fabric you've already ironed whereas these there's no way to take them off easily I mean once the fabric is in there you can't open this to take the fabric out and reposition it so in that case um, I did like these better because a couple times my fabric got a little crooked and I tried uh, equal amounts in both kinds of uh, makers and like I say in some cases I did like this better because I could adjust the paper ones easier so anyway so if you're thinking oh I'd really rather have the purchased ones you know the manufactured ones I did too. I thought that's what I want. And um, so <laughs> I actually found that I liked mine uh, just as well as if not better than the manufactured ones. So that was a surprise to me. Um, I was happy with how they worked, but I didn't realize they would work just as well as the others. So if you're not able to get some of these uh, in the mail or in stores, you can go ahead and download that free uh, bias tape maker from the website and have a shot. Uh, I do recommend only use like a cardstock paper when you print it out because a uh, simple 20 pound bond paper would be too light. It would just wrinkle and, and it wouldn't work. So there's that note. 
Also, I'm still working on jackets, so those projects are still in the works. They're all sewn, but I have to do buttons and snaps, so I've been working on that. I've been working on masks. Um, I will say that I've found a design that I wanted to let you know about. And let's get one that will actually show up good on camera here. There we go. No, that's the wrong one. Huh, that's the old design. Oh, here we go. Here's one. So, since elastic tends to be uh, hard to get to and um, I've heard a lot of people have issues with having the elastic around their ears. Um, if the fabric shrinks at all, then it can get too tight. Also, people who have uh, skin allergies to like latex and elastic and that kind of thing don't like to have the elastic around their ears. But if you tie them, a lot of people don't like to have to tie at the top and tie at the bottom because then they get kind of wonky. So I saw this method, which I really like. And so the mask is made the same way that I always do it on uh, my videos. But on the end, instead of affixing two ties, I made one long tie that actually feeds up through so it's not connected to the mask. And that way this can go over the back of your head and over your ears and then you can tighten that however it's comfortable and then only have one tie to do down at the bottom of your neck and it's fully adjustable that way. So then even if the fabric were to shrink over time or get a little crooked, this is totally adjustable to whatever is comfortable. And I really like that method, plus it actually uses a little bit less yardage of my uh, ties fabric and bias tape so that you're not using quite as much fabric as if you have, you know, four ties and then you'd have to tie the top and the bottom. So this seems to be well received. And like I say, this, I put one on, I want this one because um, I don't want to have to wash it again, but this, once you put it on and this goes over the back of your head and over your ears, once you get it fit snug, a lot of times these, you can even tie it loosely around the back of your neck and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, you can just tighten it if that's what you prefer, but it stays in place even with the one as long as you've pulled it snug. So that's just a method if you're wanting to make those. I simply take the end and do a casing here. Instead of uh, sewing over the ties, I come around the edge and I do back tack a little this way, come down, back tack a little this way, and then do the rest of my top stitching so that my edges of that casing are secure, but then this tie just slides through it. So that's something if you're making masks, uh, hopefully that will be helpful. Uh, promote use, promote comfort, so there you go. Then on to today's project to make a trust wig with no glue. <laughs> so I prefer wigs with no glue. Um, that's just what I prefer. I prefer them to have a soft cap and to have some flex to them. A lot of times the ones that use a lot of glue are very stiff and once they're formed to a certain kind of head, that's the only head that they'll fit. So I like a sewn wig with no glue. To do that, I've, I've done a little bit of prep work. I start out with making my own wig cap, wig cap, sorry about that, and my wig pattern, and I'll go ahead and put up a photo here, there you go. This pattern is available on the website, it's been on there for quite a while, so you can hop over there and download that. It will have the size for the one-third and the one-fourth um, uh, wig cap sizes. The method is going to be the same regardless of what size you want to make. So I start out with making a wig cap. Now this looks kind of pancake-ish, but that's okay because all my wig caps have elastic sewn around the edge. So I started out by simply cutting two of the sides, the, let's see, the back and the front. I sew the crown together first and then sew the sides on. And then I put a small hem around the edge 
uh, just so I've got a finished edge. Now the cool thing about this method is if you find a soft stretchy knit fabric with not a lot of stretch but a little you can get the fabric in a color similar to the hair that you're going to be using so if you have those spaces between where your tresses are going to ride on the wig itself it's not going to look like um, skin sticking through and it will help that color blend so that your wig looks more intact I know I have some even that are you know like a black wig I think the black ones are okay it's maybe like the white ones that are on a skin color cap but then if the tresses come apart you can see that skin color through the tresses and it looks like bold spots so if you do this method try to get a fabric that's a similar color to the tresses you're going to be using and then uh, that'll work now I do cut elastic for the wigs that I do the third scale are let's see the elastic is cut at seven and seven eighths inches for a fourth scale you want to cut your elastic at six and a fourth inches and then that elastic is going to overlap one half inch and I pre-sew that in place so that I get like a hairband kind of if you want to use a hairband you can but then you kind of have to sew around it instead of through it so this is what I'm going to do next to prepare the next step of the wig cap what I'm going to do is I have rain this is a Miro doll rain and I like to use this fella because his head is probably the largest third scale that I have I know some can go up to um, like 10 inches around um, and especially if you're doing like for a blithe or something like that or the pull-up dolls they have bigger heads but his for a third scale this is the the largest circumference that I have so what I do is I take the wig cap inside out and I put it on his head and there will be you know some bulk here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the elastic with that band where it's sewn together and I'm going to put that around it and I like to if I'm doing a uh, a fur wig I do the same thing I turn it inside out and put it on the head and roughly place the elastic around and this is the fun part so if you don't like squiggling fabrics you probably <laughs> won't like this process <laughs> but this is how I do it so I get the back lined up and then the front lined up and right now I have it above that hemline but when I actually sew it on I'm going to overlap the elastic right on the hemline but this just kind of helps hold in place so now you can see that this wig cap will stretch out to fit and he has I think his head is like nine inches and a quarter around and so that gives you an idea of what size this will be there's still plenty of stretch in my elastic there's still plenty of give in the cap because you can see how some of these are a little bit kind of wrinkly which means if you have a doll with a larger head then this would still work the only thing I would suggest is when you put it on your doll you may need you may notice that because of the larger head size you'll need to make the front like a quarter inch longer the back a quarter inch longer along the hemline as well as the sides make them a quarter inch longer so that it will come down to the ears and fit um, not just around the head but across the head as well um, because you don't want a wig that's big enough around but it only goes to here so you'd have to do that but this size will go on him just fine so you can kind of see what that looks like so the next step I'm going to anchor this elastic at the base and I have a little tag in here um, I usually put a little tag that says either one-third or one-fourth just so I know what size the wig cap is so I'm going to anchor the elastic at the base of the neck and then I'm also going to anchor the elastic just by tying a little knot at the very front of the head and that will 
ensure that my elastic is stretched evenly around the circumference of the wig without being way too short on one side and too long on the other. So I always like to get it all stretched so everything looks the way I want it to look and then I anchor the front and the back to help hold in place and then leaving it on his head so he's he's not like a a doll that only lives on a shelf. He's very much handled and <coughs> used for clothing fitting and sewing and so I go ahead and leave this on his head while I'm sewing the elastic to the whip the wig cap. That way I guarantee that my wig cap remains stretched. If you have an old practice head that you want to use because you don't want to risk scuffing up the resin on you know an expensive doll um, then I would use a practice head or I don't even know what else would be big enough just because I use this guy. I also have an uh, Akaji band head that I use that's a similar size but not quite as big as this guy. So anyway, um, have this fitted and stretched out while you sew on the elastic. Otherwise you're going to have to be stretching with your fingers to open up that elastic to meet the edges of the fabric and your fingers are going to really sore. Everything's going to shift and um, yeah, you, you might learn some expletives you didn't really want to be saying out loud. So <laughs> is that a nice way to say that? Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish some of my adjustments and I will sew this on and then that will come back to the camera um, because, I mean, you know how to sew something on so you just hand stitch it on there. Then the other things that we're going to be using is this braid that I bought for $2.98 and I got it during Halloween uh, season at Walmart Yeah, for $3.00. I got this much hair. So this is an ombre and I'm thinking, I'm going to see if I can go ahead and just continue this ombre. If you wanted the, the fibers to be shorter, you could feasibly cut the center of the braid and do, you know, fold it in half, but that's going to kind of make give you more of a variegated wig once you put it together, rather than an ombre that that changes tone as it goes to the end of the hair. So it all depends on on what color you find and how you want to do that. I'm going to measure this out and see if I can get enough to just use the ombre. Um, so we have the hair. The other thing I'm going to be using is tissue paper and fortunately I have pink which matches my hair color which is just convenient. So I have that. And then I also have some scotch tape that is the frosted kind of tape rather than the real clear. Um, the main reason I like that is because it's a frost and it's not a slick it'll go through my machine easier. It won't tend to gum up very much. It's more user friendly for what we're going to do. So those are the other things that we're going to use to make the wig. So I will sew this and then I'll come back to the camera. I also found if you want, if you don't want to sew on your doll's actual head, if you can find something that's a wide enough circumference to stretch your uh, cap all the way out with the elastic around it, you can also use that to go ahead and stitch around and make sure that your elastic is stretched evenly to your fabric. So that's just another idea. This is just a candle I happen to have. And uh, so at least, you know, the head cap will smell good. So <laughs> there's just another idea. If you don't want to actually sew on your doll's head, then you can use something, like I say, that has a circle that's wide enough to go ahead and stretch out your hemline so that it's all the way stretched and can match your elastic stretch. So there's just another idea as we go ahead and sew the elastic onto the head cap. Once your head cap has the elastic sewn on the inside, we can take that off and go ahead and put it onto the doll. There we go. And so this is what we're going to use to uh, be the base of our wig that we'll attach our tresses to. So here you can kind of see how it fits. There we go. And there's a little bit of uh, wrinkle there, but that just means that there's plenty of give. So that'll fit his head and the head probably, you know, a little bit larger. 
So the next thing I like to do is I need to measure how much distance of tress I'm going to need. So I want to measure all the way around and I usually will start in the back and go around, find my zero here, and go around once and then I'm going to continue to weave around the head but not like right next to the last line because if they get too close together then you end up with too much bulk so I don't try to make sure that my uh, measuring tape is actually touching itself when it goes around but I'm going to measure all the way around up to the top there we go and I like these little thin measuring tapes because it's easier to maneuver there we go and I keep coming around and around bring my little guy around here there we go Okay. So, <laughs> just to get an idea of how much length of tress I'm going to need, let's see, come on up here, and it's just kind of a general idea. And then up to the top. I've got 40 inches, there we go, 40 inches to wrap around the head cap. And then I'm also going to need just a little bit that I'm going to be taking and wrapping around itself, kind of like this. And that'll come more into play when I actually do it. But if I take a couple bits like this, that's going to be probably about three inches that I'm going to need. So all together, I'm going to need 43 inches of tress. That's going to be our next project is to move the camera and start making the hair that's going to be sewn onto our wig. Here's our package of hair. So we'll go ahead and take this out of the, the package. And we'll go ahead and undo the braid. So what we want to do is we want to lay the hair out. This is 20 inches. So in order to get my 43 inches, I'm going to need two of these lengths. So I think I'll go ahead and start by cutting this in half, like so, so that I have two. Here we go, that I can use for my three inches. Uh, there we go. So this hair, we're going to unbraid, which was probably not the goal of the Halloween designers. But here we go. And then we're going to go ahead and take off this rubber band because we just want loose hair. So let's see. I think I'll cut it from the back. I don't risk cutting more hair. Let's see if that will come out of that. There we go. Alright, so here's our loose hair. Now, if we want the hair to be the original length of the braid, we're going to have to spread this hair out so that it would reach 20 inches on both sheets of paper. I don't know that we're going to have that much, so we're going to we'll try dividing it in half, which is about there. I don't know, right there. So we'll go ahead and split the hair in half and see if we can make this stretch 20 inches. Yeah, okay. And what we're doing right now is we're creating, and I need more there we go. The, the actual tress that's going to be sewn on. 
And I'll go ahead and speed up the camera because this will take a little while. Okay, so this spread out better than I thought it would, and you just want a real thin layer so the hair is all laid out. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take the tape, this will be the fun part, and we're going to bring it all the way to the edge of the table, and then gently press it down just on the center of the paper. Just like this. And then I don't want to fold completely under, but I want to get rid of the sticky, so I'm gonna have that. Alright, so that gives us our taped edge. The next step we're gonna do is take this taped paper carefully to the machine and we're going to sew right down the middle of this. So this tape that's uh, the frosted one slides a little bit easier under the machine and then the tissue paper on the bottom of course gives the machine something to grab. So now is the challenging part which is why I have a mat so that we can get this over to the machine without spilling all our hair off of it. So there we go, we're gonna, because it still slides. If you want to, you can take and pin this down uh, to, let's see if you want to tape, pin through the tape you can. There we go, and just pin those layers together. That will kind of help hold stuff in place a little bit. But you want to make sure you're going under and grabbing the tissue paper and don't pull too hard or it'll just rip through because this is mostly just to keep things in place. There we go. Some of my hair kind of shuffled there. So we'll go ahead and pin that. So now we'll take this to the machine and we're just going to sew right down the edge. to the seam without cutting the hair. Now that I have most of the tape removed, I'm going to be folding the hair over my sewing line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it through the machine again, this time sewing and I'm going to have to get my glasses. I'm going to sew, pull this down and sew right at the edge of my sewing to sew that
press is ready, the next step we're going to do is to go ahead and gently remove the tissue paper. Now we have a long tress that's about 23 inches long and that can be wrapped around to make our wig. We've got a few little strands up here that snipped but it's okay. We'll sew those down. But anyhow that's how you make the tress that we're going to be using to make our wig. And we went ahead and kept the ombre uh, we've got a little bit thicker down here, so I'm going to use that probably across the front so I'll have a good coverage on, like the bangs. And uh, so that's our ombre tress. We'll go ahead and repeat this process to make the second tress, and then I'll be snipping about three inches to do the top of the crown, because that's going to be a little uh, separate function we do when we put the wig together. So. There's one tress, and we'll go ahead and repeat the process and make the other one. So I have both of my tresses done. This one is a little wonky, but that's all right. I'm going to stick that in the bottom of the back where it kind of double lined on me, and I went ahead and reinforced that a little bit. So I have this long tress, and though I don't use... Uh, glue when I put these together. I did use a little bit of fray check because I wanted the three inch strip if you remember. So I did a bunch of back tacking and then I snipped that apart and did use a little fray check um, there just because I was actually cutting through my sewing. So I have my two long tresses. So here is where rain comes into play as my model once again and we can put his foot up here I suppose one foot down maybe this way there you go and I'll turn off my machine just for safety purposes so here I'm going to go ahead and start putting the tresses onto the wig so now I want to start I'm going to take this that was a little messy and I'm going to start at the back and I'm going to start sewing this on right around the edge and then I'm going to keep this on the front uh, hanging forward. So it's just going to be sewn all the way around. And when I get to where it meets, I'm going to overlap, but I'm not going to make it exactly on top of itself, like right here, because then it can get a little too bulky. So it's going to be like above it slightly, but then it'll cover that up. So I'm going to start go ahead to uh, to start sewing this on.
after quite an adventure <laughs> and several attempts at filming, <laughs> here she is with the new wig. Oh my goodness. So when I was putting the wig together, I got all the way, I sewed all the way around, which you saw, and then I tried to get to the top and I hadn't spaced the wefts out good enough at the rim from the rim in the second row. So by the time I got to the top, it was kind of bald. So I tried to fix that. It didn't work. Then I tried to fix that and it didn't work. So yes, I ended up taking it all apart <laughs> and, and starting again, which worked out much better. It's still a little sheer in some places. So I think had I went ahead and cut the wig up at the top, you know, where the rubber band was and just folded it here and let the dark and the pink mix for a variegated look, I would have had a lot more length of tress to actually go around the wig cap. And, uh, but as it is, it's okay. And on the little top knot, what I did is I took that three inch section and folded it in half and then braided little tiny strands back and forth so that the tiny strands would cover the weft line and then sewed the weft line onto the head. So there's a little bit of a bald spot here, right there, but let's see, hopefully that'll show up. But that covers where your little spiral comes to a close. Then you put that little top knot on the top and just sew it on there. So this is what it looks like. She has little clips in it. And, uh, but anyhow, it turned out okay, especially for, you know, $2.98 and uh, a little bit of elastic. So now we have a full length long wig in ombre pink. Um, this doll's head, I went and grabbed my paper. This is an Island Doll Ada. Her head is eight and five eighths inches circumference. And it is like right on there. It could have been a little bit longer, like I mentioned, if you have a bigger head. Just take the semicircle that's the side and bring it down like a quarter inch like add an extra seam allowance basically to the hemline and then as well in the front and the back and you'll have more coverage on your wig cap. But just remember if you do that, you're going to need more wefting to adjust for that additional volume of fabric. But anyhow, she turned out really cute with her little pink wig and her pink outfit. So yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out and uh, there we go. So I'm sorry some of the footage, it just the camera wasn't working. I don't know if it was a battery issue or then one of my SD cards said it had too much of the memory used up, so it was a challenge, but we got it all done. The other thing I was going to let you know is I did get the oversized sweater done out of that sparkly fabric, which turned out really well, so I was glad about that, so it's the same as the purple one, and I did a pair of uh, black pants to match. Um, I do have a gray pair like this, a medium gray pair, uh, for sale on eBay. I can put my eBay link down in the bottom. But I will be posting the pattern for these pants. I do have another uh, harem pant with a dropped crotch pattern that I designed for the Resin Soul long body, which is a 70 centimeter body. So those pants are a little long and oversized for the 66 centimeter guys. So this pair of pants, his gray pants, and then this black pair, they just fit this guy a little bit better. They are a little bit long, which is just a look that I like so you can measure. Um, and the only thing is measure the outer seam for your length because it does have a dropped crotch. So you can't just go by the inseam for your length or you'll end up with something really wonky. <laughs> but it does have the pieces if you want to do a cuffed hemline down at the ankle, if you want to do that. Um, there is a, a higher cuff, I think, just because I did some adjusting. Or you can make them without the cuff if that's what you like. But anyway, I will have that pattern available um, when I post this video and I'll, I'll put it on the website. So if you want to head uh, over to missysimaginings.com, you can find the pattern for the head cap and the pattern for the little um, wingtip shoes, here they are, and the pattern for the harem pants for the 66 centimeter tall body. 
So anyway, I think that finally wraps up our video. So sorry that some of the footage looked a little sparse, but I wanted to catch up with you at the end. And uh, like I said, I filmed this ending twice and now the third time. So hopefully this one will work. So until we meet again, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Uh, just have a great day or evening or morning or whatever it is today. So do something fun and have some fun sewing and I'll see you next time. Bye.